This lesson is for section 14.4. We're going to be talking about specific types of sequences, arithmetic sequences, as well as arithmetic series. The first objective for today is to find a specific term or the common difference for an arithmetic sequence. And then on the back page, we are going to be finding partial sums of arithmetic sequences. So let's discuss first what an arithmetic sequence is. You might also see it referred to as an arithmetic progression. But basically, all that this sequence does, it's special because in order to move from one term to the next, you have to add the same constant to each successive term. In other words, you're going to add the same number to each previous term. We call that number, what we're adding to each term, the common difference. Okay. So for example here, in this sequence, we are adding 3 to each term in order to get to the next term. So our common difference, d, is equal to 3. In the next term, or in the next sequence here, I'm subtracting 4 from each term to get to the next term. Or you can also say you're adding a negative 4. So my common difference here is negative 4. Now, I have uh, the formula for the nth term of any arithmetic sequence. But I think in order to really you know, be able to use this is to basically be able to understand it and, as opposed to just memorizing. So the reason why your, your arithmetic sequence uh, the general term here looks like this is because you're going to take your first term let's say it's 2 okay to get to the in this case the fifth term you would have to add your common difference four times right because by the fourth time adding that 3 you should end up with your fifth term what this does is it takes your first term so that 2 our first term it then adds 5 minus 1 times d, your common difference. So in this case we had 2 plus, it was the fifth term, so 4d. And that d value was 3, which is why we end up with 14. So really I think this makes sense um, and it's harder to memorize I think the formula than to understand it. So I really want to stress that you should understand this formula and where it's coming from and why it looks the way it does. Um, I'd also like to point out that an arithmetic sequence is really a linear function if you think about it y equals mx plus b instead of having um, y we have an output that's a sub n and here our slope times our input is really just n minus 1 times our common difference d our common difference is really like that slope okay and our uh, b value our starting value is a sub 1 so it's really like a, a linear function, and I think if you kind of blend those two ideas together, it'll be really easy to remember how to use that formula. So for example, in number one here, it says find the 40th term of 7, 12, 17, dot, 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 and so on. So this is an arithmetic sequence, and the common difference to get from one step to the other is just five, right? We add five to each term. So a sub 40, my 40th term, should be my first term, seven, plus that common difference multiplied by 39 times. And the reason why it's 39 times is, again, if you want to get from the first term to the 40th term, and each term is supposed to be you know, adding 5, well, then you're just going to add 39 more times in order to get to that 40th term. So we end up with 202. So a sub 40 is 202. The 40th term is 202. Now number two is a variation on the same type of idea here, but instead they're asking uh, to find the specific term number. Okay, For this particular number that's given, we want to know what term was this in this particular arithmetic sequence. So they already give us a sub 1 and d. Um, our common difference is 3, our first term is 5. So we know that 101 should equal our first term plus n minus 1 times the common difference. Okay, that, and that common difference, which is 3. Now, this is just a linear equation. And to solve this linear equation, you're just going to distribute that 3. Okay, And then, in this case, we would, let's see, subtract 2. So we get 99 equals 3n, and n equals 33. Now, that would mean that 101 is the 33rd term in this particular sequence. Now, you should know that you shouldn't get you know 33.2. Okay, because our, our uh, inputs are only natural numbers, and we can't have 33.2 terms. Okay, so it should be um, you know, a natural number here for our, for our final answer there. Now, I will let you guys try B 
since it's so similar. Try that one on your own. And then we'll work on uh, three. Now three, I think, is one of the more interesting questions from this particular section um, because we're given such little information here. It says determine the arithmetic sequence, so give the general term, when the second term is negative 2 and the eighth term is 40. So right now I know that a sub 2 is equal to negative 2 and a sub 8 is equal to 40. So this doesn't seem like it's a lot of information for us. Um, but what we can do is say that, all right, well, that that second term, negative 2, should equal my first term plus 2 minus 1 times d. Okay, since it's the second term, it's only going to be added one time. The d would only be added one time. Now, um, the eighth term, which is 40, should be that first term plus 7 times d, or 8 minus 1 times d. Okay, now if you look at this and you clean up this, uh, these two equations here, I have a sub 1 plus 1d, so just d is equal to negative 2, and a sub 1 plus 7d is equal to 40. Now this is simply a system here that we're going to now solve. Okay, So using elimination here, I would get negative 6d is equal to negative 42, so d was equal to 7. Um, plugging in 7 back in, I'd get d is equal to, or I'm sorry, a sub 1, our first term, is negative 9. So that means that in general, this sequence would be uh, that any term in this sequence would be a sub 1, so negative 9, plus 7 times, however many times you need to add it, um, which is going to be n minus 1, and that would be the general term here. So it's not too bad um, once you try to always write out the information in terms of what you actually know. So continue to write, even though it seems like it's limited information, you can continue to write in general terms you know, what the, uh, that sequence might look like and then simply solve a system from there. So look out for these. These will be um, around a lot in your homework and possibly in your quiz. Hint, hint. All right, now in, in problems four and five, um, I just want to show you two ways of basically asking the same type of question, and it's very similar to what we already worked on in number one, so I'll probably leave both of these to you to do on your own. Um, but uh, in this case here, do you see how they don't have an A sub one? Your book does this too a lot. It just gives you a equals 3. You can assume that if they're giving you an a value, that that a value is a sub 1. So uh, in this case, a sub 1 is 3. Um, and then we're going to find the 75th term using that common difference there. Uh, in part B, they don't give you the common difference, so they're not like being so explicit about it. They expect you to be able to see that, though, that uh, if you take you know, your first term here, a sub 1 is 2 fifths, right? Well, to get to the next term, and then to get to the next term after that, you have to add two-fifths as well. So in this case, you have to find those two pieces of information. And then here, we're asking to find the 30th term using your information here and here. Okay, so try those on your own and check with the key. Now, the next question I really like, um, this one has even less information given to you, I feel like, than the other one that we just worked on with the system. Here it says, find the common difference. So let's make sure that in the end, we answer this particular question. Find the common difference in an arithmetic sequence with a sub 10 minus a sub 20 equaling 70. So in other words, the 10th term minus your 20th term has a difference of 70. So I feel like this is way less information, but let's try it out. So let's write out a sub 10. So we know that a sub 10 is equal to our first term plus 10 minus 1, so 9 times that common difference. We know that a sub 20 is equal to a sub 1 plus 20 minus 1, so 19 times d. Okay. Now, this isn't much to go off of, but we do know that a sub 10 minus a sub 20 is equal to 70. We don't know what these particular terms are exactly, but we do know that their difference is 70. So I'm going to use a little bit of algebra here, and I'm going to say, okay, if I take both of these values, um, or I'm sorry, a, let's do a sub 10 minus a sub 20 first. So if I want to subtract this value from that, that would be the same as subtracting this entire uh, line here, this equation, a sub 1 min plus 9d minus a sub 1 plus 19d. So if I write this all out, 
I know that that's supposed to equal 70, right? If I take a sub 10, which is defined as this, and subtract a sub 20, which is defined as that, I should get 70, the difference here. So I like the fact that these a terms end up canceling out. I'm left with 9d minus 19d, so negative 10d should equal 70, giving me a common difference here of negative 7. So don't think just because you have limited information that you have to stop somewhere. Um, just continue to write, you know, come up with, be creative, come up with, with ways that you can relate the terms to one another, um, and you'll surprise yourself with how, how you're able to problem solve. Okay, on the next page here, we're going to be talking about arithmetic series. Now, a series is simply the sum of a sequence, okay? Now, when we want to find the nth partial sum, when you call that the nth partial sum, but all that that really means is you're finding the sum of just the first n terms, so whatever you define as n, but you're just finding the first n terms of the sequence, you denote that partial sum as s sub n. So we're using notation here, s sub n just means the, the partial sum for a particular arithmetic sequence when you're using the first n terms. So here I've got, um, consider this arithmetic sequence, okay? Really this should say series actually because this is indicating that we're summing all of these uh, terms here. So uh, basically I've, gi I've given you a sequence, right? The sequence would be one, two, three, four, dot, 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 dot. Now I'm listing the first 100 terms. We're finding the sum. We call this a series now, okay? Um, I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Like for example, how can we find the sum quickly? Now you could sit there with a calculator and try to add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 and do that 100 times to find your answer, but there's got to be a more efficient way because mathematicians are always obsessed with finding faster ways of doing things. So let's, let's think about this analytically a little bit. Now how many pairs of numbers are there within this uh, first 100 terms of this particular sequence? Well, there's 1 through 100, so I'm going to assume that there are 50 pairs, right? 100 divided by 2. Now, how many terms are there? There are 100 terms. Now, the next part, what do the pairs add up to? Well, it depends on how I pair the numbers, right? Well, I want to pair the numbers in a very convenient way for me. If I pair them where I take the first term and the last term, I get 101 if I sum those. If I pair the second term with the second to last term, 2 plus 99 also gives me 101. And if I do 3 plus 98, I get 101. And you kind of see where I'm going here. If I pair them in this particular manner, I always end up with a sum of 101. So that means that if I had 50 pairs and the sum of each pair was 101, then 50 times 101 would be the total sum for this particular series. So 5,050 would be the partial sum for this 100 terms, first 100 terms in this particular arithmetic sequence. All right. so. Here I've got these uh, formulas that I think look super co confusing. You know, there's so much that we already ask you to kind of memorize in math, and I, I want you to get away from always trying to memorize things. Again, try to understand where these uh, particular formulas are coming from. So we kind of already used it up here using common sense. That formula is exactly the same as all of these here, just using some common sense. Now, notice the, the subscript here, S sub N, so that's our notation now is equal to the number of terms divided by 2. We took 100 terms and we divided that by 2 to end up with this 50. And then we took the first term and the last term, 101, um, and we found the sum there and multiplied it by however many, you know, the pairs there were. Now this particular formula here, instead of pair, using pairs, it just uses the number of terms. So here we would use 100 terms and our first term 1 plus our last term, 100, divided by 2. So this time, instead of taking the, the number of pairs, they're just taking the sum and cutting that in half. Now your textbook, and a lot of, uh, even me, I like to use this one here, just because I really like to multiply by the number of terms as opposed to remembering to cut the terms in half. It's really the same exact thing as this, or even this formula over here as well. It's just another representation of, of the same thing. Um, but I like to use this idea. Okay, so I don't know why, I just do. All right, let's try number six here without even using that formula, so don't look above. I'm gonna hide it. Okay, it says find the sum of the first 50 terms with the first being negative eight and the 50th being 139. So let's list out what we know. We know that a sub one 
is equal to negative 8, and we know that a sub 50 is equal to 139. Now we're finding the sum of the first 50 terms. So the sum of the first 50 terms would be s with a subscript of 50, so s sub 50. And just going off of what we did with that, that example um, arithmetic sequence, when we wanted to find the arithmetic series for that, we took the number of, of pairs. In this case, I want to take the number of terms. I don't want to pair them up necessarily. But I just add negative 8 plus 139. That's the first and the last term. right? This would be, it has to be the last term here. And then I'm going to cut that sum in half and multiply it by the number of terms, 50. So again, try to remember um, how you're applying it and not necessarily memorizing you know, the formula. All right, so the partial sum of the first 50 terms here ends up being 3,275. Okay, so unlike the first uh, example that we went through, there would be no way to just try to calculate this with your calculator um, unless you found like you know the common difference and then you went back and you found every single term added them all up and then that would take forever it seems like well not forever but a long time um, so it's very efficient to be able to understand this formula to be able to use it okay next up question seven here um, is my favorite question on this whole entire note sheet yep I have favorites just like I have favorite students <laughs> that's that's a lie I love you all okay seriously love you okay anyhow the fifth and fiftieth terms of an arithmetic sequence are 3 and 30, respectively. Find the sum of the first 10. So this question here, finding the sum of the first 10, is really what I'm asking. So s sub 10 is equal to, let's talk about what that would be, the, the sum of the first 10 terms. So I clearly know that the number of terms is going to be 10, but I am lacking a sub 1. I am lacking a sub 10. I don't know what those two values are, but I do know that I'm supposed to cut them in half in order to find the partial sum. So really, I'm missing a sub 1 and a sub 10. Um, so I'm going to go back to what I've been given in order to find those things. Okay, So a sub 5, the fifth term, is 3. And the 50th term is 30. Now I hope you recognize this is a problem that we just worked on on the front side of your notes. You're going to solve a system here. Because you know that a sub 50 should equal or I'm sorry, a sub 5, the first, the fifth term here, which is 3, should equal your first term, a sub 1, plus 4 times the common difference. Write that 5 minus 1 times d. Now, the 50th term, which is 30, should be the first term added to 29, oh, I'm sorry, 49. 49, all right, because this is the 50th term. 49 times d. So, now, if I solve this system here, let's erase this so you can see I'm just solving this particular system here for a sub 1 and, and d. Um, subtracting here, let's see, I get 45d is equal to 27, so d would equal 27 forty fifths. Okay, now if I plug in back in here, I get a sub 1, and I already worked this one out, I think it was 0. 0.6, okay, so a sub 1 is 0. 0.6. Now, Already, I've got this information, but I still need to find a sub 10. So a sub 10 should be the first term, a sub 1, plus 9 times the common difference. And in this case, the common difference was 27 40 fifths. Okay, so I end up with a sub 10 is equal to 6. Okay, and from here, I'm going to now find the sum, since I have... Um, a sub 1 and a sub 10, I can find this partial series here. This partial sum now is going to be 10 times a sub 1.6 plus 6 divided by 2. So some of the first 10 terms is 33. Okay, last but not least here, question number 8 uses sigma notation. Okay, don't get confused on this because all that it's asking you to do, remember this sigma just means sum, so to find the sum of the fifth term through the 100th term. So this is not as straightforward as if I were to ask you the first 100 terms, right? Like if n equals 1 here and uh, you're going up to 100. Well, that's really straightforward how many terms you're going to multiply by. So s sub 100, right, the first 100 terms would be 100 
multiplied by your first term, a sub 1, plus your 100th term divided by 2. That's easy. We just did a couple of those. But it's not so easy when we, we take the fifth term through the 100th term. Now, it's not as straightforward for people for some reason to see how many terms there would be from the fifth through the 100th, because I feel like you don't count starting with five usually, and that's why it doesn't make a lot of sense. But look at the difference between 100 and, and uh, this n equals 1. Really, it's 99, right? But we have to add 1 to get to the number of terms. So in this case, the difference here is 100 to 5. So that's 95, but we have to add 1. So there's really 96 total terms. Okay, there's 96 total terms. And a sub 1, I'm sorry, a sub 5, right? Because we're talking about the fifth term here, would be 2 times 5 minus 1. So a sub 5 would equal 9. a sub 100 would be 2 times 100 minus 1. So I'm just using this as the definition here, this linear function. And I end up with 200 minus 1, so 199. Now, in my, uh, my sum here, this partial sum, I'm going to take the number of terms, 96, multiply that by 9 plus 199, cut in half, and this would end up giving me, if I want to use that sigma notation again, this particular uh, sum. Okay? So we end up with a pretty big number here, 9,984. So that would be the sum of the fifth through the 100th term. Okay, that is the end of the lesson. Um, I hope you like it. hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in class mañana.